we made it hello everyone and welcome back to my channel this is a video that i'm very happy to film as this will be the last one of this november challenge that i did throughout the whole month of november talking about film noir classics initially as many of you would know i intended to do one video a day but yes that was close to impossible as it obviously turned out but nevertheless i ended up filming and posting 20 videos which i also thought was very fitting because it's for better for worse 2020 so even though i thought that i would have to extend posting these videos up until december i ended up figuring out that with this video i would have a round figure so that's why i decided to mark this video as the finale of this series and first of all i want to thank you all for joining me i want to give thanks to everyone who commented who liked the videos who shared the videos i appreciate so much the support the feedback and you're subscribing to this channel we're now over 200 subscribers now i am very happy but most of all really for the lovely people that have been a constant with their support thank you so much my lovely friends and i also want to give special thanks to my mom because without her i couldn't have ever even thought of doing a challenge like this and i am truly lucky that i can share my passion with her so on that note i'm hoping to also publish a special video a thank you video on december that's something that i'm working on but today as promised is the video with which we'll close up this november challenge but first we need a little color color you might say in film noir yes color because today we're going to talk about leave her to heaven released in 1945 by 20th century fox and directed by john m stahl the starring roles of jean tierney long ago revealed her as an incomparable dramatic artist but in the part of ellen in leave her to heaven she gives one of the truly great dramatic performances of our time on the devastatingly beautiful Ellen, it was said, she would cheat, lie, deceive, stop at nothing to make the man she loved her exclusive possession. With matchless dramatic power and romantic appeal, Cornell Wilde surpasses all his previous triumphs. As Richard Harlan, he fights his mad desire to marry Ellen. Now look here, Ellen. Darling, will you marry? Unpredictable little... Lovely Jean Crane discloses new emotional artistry. There might be some doubts as to why this movie is considered film noir when it's in color, as it is true that Leave Her to Heaven navigates the dark waters of psychological melodrama with one of his master directors, again John M. Stahl, and film noir with a legendary psychopath female protagonist played by Jean Tierney in one of her most epic and most iconic performances. But the reality, I should say, is that considerations aside labels aside this is a movie that quite like many that we have seen over this noir vember it is a work of art that really needs to be appreciated as a whole that indeed does contain many film noir elements a very long flashback with which we're told the story we have also a manipulative femme fatale far more complex than other femme fatales that we've seen in previous movies there is also a pervasive sense of fatality throughout the whole movie so that's when this movie deviates from melodrama and gets into a whole other universe there is also a tale of possessive love of obsession everything in this movie speaks of a darker human nature than your average melodramas up to that date but with this movie what i really would love to talk about is jean tierney especially because in 2020 she would have turned 100 years old and the movie is essentially 
her movie one of her best parts and one of her best performances and that's what the focus of this video will be on as many of you would know if you have watched the movie her character ellen is marked by a deeply troubled personality and her unstable psychological traits jean tierney's creation in this movie as i was saying i think is significantly more complex and darker than other femme fatales and also i should say quite unique her poise her gravitas throughout the film even in deeply intense scenes is i'd say quite remarkable and one of the things that made this movie eternal she was nominated that year but she lost to john crawford's mildred pierce who was also let's face it quite amazing as well but truly jean tierney really killed it literally that year there are as always many interpretations of her character of her psychological traits but for me since she is played by jean tierney i always try when i watch leave her to heaven to understand her character a little bit more i can't help but ponder that back then more often than not ideal women were portrayed as examples of pure love abnegation sacrifice resignation and she is truly the opposite of that and really all i'm fishing to say is that i feel that leave her to heaven just gets more and more interesting as years go by jean tierney who was an admirable advocate for mental health was able to create and live her to heaven a magnificent intricate almost otherworldly character that has truly made movie history for a decade in the 40s she was 20th century fox top leading lady really her performance in laura which we discussed during this november catapulted her into stardom she was able to convey an almost impossible combination of serenity mystery fascination dignity and sensuality there is no equal to what she created in movies like the ones we've mentioned this november or the the Ghost and Miss Muir, Heaven Can Wait, The Razor's Edge, one of my favorites, or Advice and Consent. And she always came across to me as this very intelligent, very feminine woman that much like her portrait in Laura, she's almost mystical and incredible. So from here, my most sincere tribute to a fantastic actress and a great human being. Also, many of you would know Leave Her to Heaven was based on an homonymous novel by author Ben Ames Williams. The book had been an absolute bestseller upon its publication, so naturally, all studios wanted to get a hold of the film rights. Daryl F. Zanuck, head of 20th Century Fox, acquired them in 1944, apparently urged by John M. Stahl, Otto Preminger, and Joseph Leo Mankiewicz. It turned out to be a fantastic move for the studio because Leave Her to Heaven was 20th Century Fox most successful movie in the 40s. They cast, obviously, Gene Tierney, who had had a great success the year before with Laura, but I read that Rita Hayworth was also considered for the part, but she turned it down. When we talk about Leave Her to Heaven, we also have to mention its director, as I said, John M. Stahl. He was a veteran filmmaker, predominantly known for women pictures, as they were referred to back then, such as Backstreet, Imitation of Life, or Magnificent Obsession. This last two were both remade by Douglas Sirk, a director that I particularly admire, but never I'd say in John M. Stahl movies, he had had a female character such as Ellen Berendt in Leave Her to Heaven. She is then an unconventional and therefore a really fascinating character. Also, obviously in the movie, we have the rest of the cast, Cornel Wilde, who plays Ellen's husband, Jean Crane, her cousin, and Vincent Price, magnificent Vincent Price, who had also appeared in Laura and would appear again in films like Dragonwick, also with an ill-fated romance between them. But if there's one thing we have to mention too about Leave Her to Heaven is Technicolor. This is the other quite outstanding protagonist of Leave Her to Heaven. Leon Shamroy creates an almost impossibly beautiful color here with a slight tint of orange 
throughout the movie and it is one use that has been imitated and has influenced yet again many filmmakers. He and Charles Lang, a cinematographer that we talked about in the video dedicated to the movie The Big Heat, share the record for most number of Oscar nominations for best cinematography. Shamroy was a very meticulous professional and it's something that comes across in titles such as The Snows of Kilimanjaro, Love is a Many Splendored Thing, and the king and i the way not only jean tierney who appears impossibly beautiful again but also the lovely surroundings the locations it's supposed to be in maine although i think it was filmed in california this is indeed a movie to soak in and experience not only for the story and the performances but also because of how beautiful and magnificent its visuals are all right so that was all for today video and that was all for this November challenge I cannot truly fully express how grateful and how happy I am to have done this it was indeed a challenge in so many ways not only because it was a challenge to film and write and edit all these videos but also because things happened in between and again thanks to my mom for all the support and every time i would read a comment or a tweet and some of you might say something nice it helped me push forward so thank you so much for sharing with me the appreciation for classic movies i am beyond grateful especially on a year like this it was a lot of hard work but I have to confess that it truly helped me, that these videos have truly helped me a lot get through one really difficult yet also very rewarding year in many aspects. So I've said it a million times but truly thank you for watching, thank you for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed it and as always stay safe, take care, enjoy movies and see you all very soon for another video. And until then much love. Bye.